Now, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to the book of Judges, the book of Judges chapter 16, and it's page 306 and 307 in my Bible. While you're turning there, I'd like to say to the radio listening audience, if you're not getting our daily broadcast, you tune to the station where you're now listening at 12 o'clock noon each day, Monday through Saturday, and you can get the daily broadcast. And we'd like to hear from you. This is a faith ministry. We depend upon you that love God to work with us in getting out the gospel. Now the singing and the message today will be on cassette tape. That beautiful song Linda sang, that'd be well worth the price of the tape. We are sending these tape out for a gift of $3 each. And the money is used to help pay for radio time and radio expense. Now you can write in and get these. We also have our brochures on our proposed Holy Land tour for next year, planning to go into Jordan, into Israel. We've gone to Masarder, and then of course the Dead Sea and the Mount of Olives, Mount Calvary, the Garden Tomb, take her out of the Sea of Galilee, other wonderful places, and then go to the Sea of Galilee, where we'll take a ride there on the boat. And of course, then we go into Egypt, the Lord willing, we see the pyramids, the Sphinx, and the museum. In this museum, they have many articles they took out of old King Tut's tomb. It's amazing to see what they took out of that tomb. The church, this church wouldn't hold the things they took out of a King Tut's tomb. There'd be golden coffins and chariots and things of that type. It's well worth the trip just to see that museum in Egypt. We planning to go there. If you're interested in this tour, write in and get a brochure. Drop by to see me or call me. I'll be delighted to send you on to talk with you about it. Maybe you have a friend you'd like to send, or maybe someone listening today, your pastor's never been, or your pastor and his wife. No greater thing could you do for them than send them to the Holy Land. Now, this is my mailing address. Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. I'd like to hear from you this week. Now, I'm going to speak today on this subject. The man that got his hair cut in the devil's barbershop and lost his power. The man that received a haircut in the devil's barbershop and lost his power. Judges chapter 16. Speaking about the barbershop, you may have heard me tell this story about this man about town. Decided he had to go into a barbershop and get her hair cut and a shave and he went in and sat down in the barber chair, the beautiful blonde-headed woman there, a manicurist, and he wanted to get his fingernails manicured. And so while the man was shaving him, cutting his hair, she began to work on his fingers. And he said to her, said, you're a beautiful young woman. And she said, I thank you. He said, uh, uh, how about going out with me tonight? She said, I, I can't do that. Said. Uh, I'm married. He said, well, that's no big deal. I said, just tell your husband you'll be late tonight. She said, why don't you tell him? He's one that's shaving you. <laughs> now, Matthew chapter, or rather, Judges chapter 16. Now, we find that Samson in the Bible is a man that received a haircut in the devil's barbershop and lost his power. Now, I'd like to read a couple of chapters here, but I won't have time to do that. And so I'm going to begin reading with verse 18 of Judges chapter 16. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart. Then the lord of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep on her knee, upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes brought him down to Gezer, and bound him with feathers of brass, and he did grind in the prison house, howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. 
Now there's several things I want to say about this man that received a haircut in the devil's barbershop. Now Samson was a Nazarite. A Nazarite from his mother's womb and that meant that he could drink no wine. He couldn't eat anything that was contrary to the law of God in that respect and he could not get his hair cut. A Nazarite could not get her hair cut. He had long hair. He was not a hippie by any means. He was a Nazarite, but he could not cut his hair because of the law of God. And a Nazarite could not do that in those days. Now we do know that Jesus was a Nazarene and Samson was a Nazarite. Now don't get these confused. Jesus was called a Nazarene because he was born in, uh, or rather lived in Nazareth. He's born in Bethlehem, but grew up in a little village called Nazareth. And he was called a Nazarene. So you see this parallel between Samson and Christ. Samson was called a Nazarite. He belonged to this order. He had to be a full-blooded Jew. And he belonged to the Nazarite order. And his mother could not drink wine, a strong drink. Uh, so uh, he could not. And he became a peculiar person, a unique person, a person greatly used and blessed of God. And he was one of the judges in Israel. I believe he's judge number seven, and he ruled Israel for 20 years. Now, Samson was a very strong man, and God gave him this physical power. The Holy Spirit would come upon him, and then he could just pick up the gates of a city and walk off with them. And he did many things in his strength that God gave him when the Spirit of God came upon him. Now we find in the Bible that uh, Manoah and his wife had no children, and they had prayed for children, and the angel appeared unto uh, Samson's mother and dad and told them that they would have this boy. He'd be born into their home, but that he would be a Nazarite. And so that was a message from heaven that this boy was to grow up to be a Nazarite, and he was to be a judge in Israel, and he was used to deliver Israel, according to the Bible, from the power of the Philistines. They had dominated Israel for some 40 years. And so he was raised up to deliver them. A strong man. And the Philistines was his greatest enemy. And God gave him power to overcome them. And deliver Israel from under their dominion. And so he was a deliverer. But in his death. He accomplished more in this respect. In delivering Israel from the Philistines at his death. Than he did his entire life. Now, Jesus accomplished more at his death on Calvary, his death, burial, and resurrection, than he did his entire life while he lived upon the earth because he came to die and pay the sin debt that we might be saved. Now, I want to call your attention to some of Samson's deeds that he did while he was a young man upon the earth. The Bible says he married a Philistine against the will of his parents. In Judges chapter 14, verses 1 through 4, you find that record. I went down and visited the Philistines, the enemies of God, and he fell in love with a young woman down there, a Philistine girl. He told his parents about it, and they said, Son, you, you can't marry that girl. You shouldn't marry her because she's uh, among the uncircumcised, that is, uh, the uh, people, one circumcised people inside of God Almighty, and that uh, you can't marry her because they are the enemies of God Almighty. And so he fell in love with her. He wanted her anyway. And according to the Bible, he would go and visit her. And he wanted to marry her. And he, he went to see and visited her contrary to the wishes of uh, his uh, parents. And one day, going down to visit her, a lion came out and attacked him. He saw this lion coming. And uh, Samson being a strong man, the power of God upon him. And the lion being the king of the animal kingdom, a very strong man. The Bible said the devil goeth about as a ruined lion seeking whom he may devour. And so this lion here is a type of the devil and through the power of the Holy Spirit of God, this man Samson overcame the lion. He killed the lion and he threw it aside. And then when he came back by later, he saw a swarm of bees had made their home in the carcass of the lion and had made some honey. And he took some of that honey and ate that honey and carried some to his mother and daddy. Now honey is good for you. 
And uh, maybe if you don't eat too much of it, uh, you have people eat, uh, mentioned in the Bible many times eating honey. And evidently honey is good for you, good for your health. So he ate the honey and then he carried some to his parents. But uh, you, did you know that Samson is the person that invented the taillights? Now we'd kind of be in bad shape at night driving around without taillights on automobiles, wouldn't we? And Samson invented the taillights. You may say, now preach Edwards, how did he do that? Well, he hated the Philistians because of what happened to him in regard to a riddle that he'd given and they, uh, he, they solved the riddle and there he had to pay off and he hated them and he wanted to destroy their fields. And this man Samson went out and caught 300 foxes. Now that was a great task within himself to catch 300 foxes. Now, I doubt I could ever catch one, but he caught 300. And the Bible said he tied their tails together. And they put something, as he, when he tied their tails together, that would burn uh, between their tails and, and tied them together and set them on fire. Uh, these 300 foxes and sent them across the fields of the Philistines to burn up their corn and so forth. So you can imagine seeing 300 foxes running across the field with their tails on fire. And there you have the first tail lights that you have mentioned anywhere. Now they weren't on an automobile, but I just assumed they were on some animals that could run about as fast as an automobile. And I just imagine it's a wonderful sight to see those 300 foxes with their tails on fire running under those shocks of corn and grain. And it was very dry, and as they'd run into that grain under those shocks, and set them on fire. And Samson burned down the fields of the Philistines. Now he had to have the power of God upon him to catch those foxes and to tie their tails together and set them on fire and turn them loose. In Judges chapter 15, verses 4 and 5, And Samson went and caught 300 foxes and took five brands and turned them tail to tail, and put a fire brand in the midst between two tails. And when he set the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines and burn up both shocks and also the standing corn. So you see, he destroyed the fields of the Philistines, the enemies of God. And then the Bible says in Judges chapter 15, verses 14 through 16, that he killed a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. So he had great power, and he took the jawbone of this donkey and went out and killed a thousand Philistians. He had to have the power of God upon him. He was a giant for God. I don't know how strong he was physically. I mean, how strong he looked physically. But we do know that he had great strength when the power of God came upon him. Now, he was a judge of Israel, and, and of course, the devil was after him because of his great power. And because he's able to deliver Israel from under the iron rule of the Philistines. And Satan wanted to stop that. Now these Philistines worshipped Dagon, a false god. And of course they worshipped the devil in that respect. And they wanted to stop this man, uh, Samson. Now Samson went down to, of course, to visit his wife there. And uh, because of the riddle that he told, that he said, I'll give you 30 shirts if you'll... Uh, guess the riddle and if you don't guess the riddle then you give me 30 shirts and and so his wife kept worrying him and saying Samson uh, you tell me the riddle let me know what the riddle is all about and and so she kept on after him until finally he yielded and gave away the secret of that riddle pertaining to that honey being in the lion and so whenever he gave the riddle away then he had to gather 30 shirts for the people that he owed the shirts to because he lost out on the riddle. And the only way he could get them is go out and, and conquer some men and wipe them out and take their shirts. And that's what he did. And brought them back and gave them to the Philistines. In the meantime, his father-in-law took his wife and gave her to another man. That's one thing that really angered Samson because he loved her and his father uh, assumed that Samson didn't care anything about her now after she'd given away the riddle, the secret of that riddle. And so he took her and gave her to someone else. He offered to Samson a younger sister, but that was the one that he loved. And so he lost his wife. She was given to another man, and that really made him angry at the Philistines. And then the Bible said Samson went in and, and later and met a young woman by the name of Delilah. 
Now Samson loved Delilah. She's a beautiful woman. And he would go and visit her. Now of course the Philistines kept trying to find out the secret of his power. And they began to work on the ladder to find out the secret of Samson's great power. And she kept asking him the secret of his power. And he kept teasing her about it. He'd say, you tie me with strong ropes. And then uh, that would be, uh, of course, that would hinder me. I, I, I wouldn't have power uh, to do what uh, I had been doing with the power God gave me. And they tied him with wits and they tied him with ropes and so forth. But he would just snap him apart. And when they would tie him up, she would say, Samson, the Philistines be upon thee. And he would just get up and break them asunder and pick up the gates of the city and walk off with it. And they couldn't do anything with this great man of God. He had great power with God and they couldn't handle him. And uh, this one man could handle a mighty army. And so they said, we must find out the secret of his power. There's a secret somewhere and we must find it out. Of course, they didn't realize it was in his hair. He had seven beautiful locks of hair. And uh, his power lay in those seven locks of hair. And he knew if he cut his hair that he would lose his power and be as other men. And so he kept uh, visiting Delilah. And Delilah kept saying, Now, Samson, I want you to tell me something about the secret of your power. Now, she was a beautiful woman in Judges chapter 16, verse 4. It came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Zorah whose name was Delilah. He had fallen in love with this woman. Seemed that Samson couldn't leave the women alone. It seemed that Samson was forever going away from the Israelis, the Israelites people, and going out and falling in love with strange women. And that's what he did here. And so this woman set out to find the secret of his power, and the Philistines offered her good money to do so. They said, if you find out the secret of that man's power, we'll give you a goodly sum of money. And so she was dead set to get that money. She wanted to find out his power, the secret of his power. And so he, he lied to her. He said, now, you tie me with uh, uh, some um, uh, ropes and so forth. And, and uh, he teased her about the situation, but it didn't work out. And then... Uh, uh, she finally kept worrying him. She said, Samson, you just don't love me. And she, of course, uh, she had those crocodile tears. And the tears of a woman any time will move the heart of a man. They have great power, no doubt about that. And there, when he saw those tears running down her face, and she said, now, Samson, if you really love me, you'll tell me the secret of your power. And Samson would lie to her, but she knew he was lying all the time. And sometimes, you know, women are very wise in that respect. They pretty well tell when a man is lying to them. And so she knew Samson was lying to her. And he told one lie after another. And finally she just kept on. She said, now, Samson, I want you to tell me the truth. If you love me, then you'll tell me the truth about the secret of your power. And finally she worried him so much about it until he told about it. In Judges chapter 16, verses 16 and 17, and it came to pass when she pressed him daily with the words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There has not come a raise up on my head for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like other men. Now when he told her that, she knew he was telling her the truth. She realized then he had told her all of his heart and he was telling her the truth. And no doubt he was sleeping and late at night and she said, Now, Samson, why don't you just take your nap? And he lay his head on a lap and went to sleep. And while he was asleep, she called for the Philistines to come in and bring their shears or their clippers or whatever they use and there cut his hair off. They said to, she said to them, He's told me his whole heart. I knew when he was lying, but when he told me uh, about the hair, I knew he was telling me the truth. And she knew that, and they cut old Samson's hair off, and those beautiful seven locks of hair fell to the floor. And then she said, Samson, the Philistines be upon thee. He aroused and got up and shook himself. He said, well, I'll go out as usual like I've been doing. I'll just walk out, tear the gates off of the wall, and go on about my business. But the Bible says he got up and shook himself and found out his power's gone. 
There he received a haircut in the devil's barbershop and lost all of his power with God and man. His power lay in the seven locks of his hair. Now you'll find the counterpart for us in the book of 2 Peter chapter 1. Let's see something about the seven locks of hair here. In 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 5 through 9, speaking about us as Christian people, if we want power with God, we must have these seven locks, so to speak. In, in 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 5 through 9, and beside this, give all diligence, add to your faith, faith, that's the first lock, virtue. Virtue is the second lock, and to virtue, knowledge. Knowledge is the third lock, and the knowledge, temperance, and temperance is the fourth lock, and the temperance, patience, and patience is the fifth lock, and patience, uh, godliness, godliness is the sixth lock, and then under godless, uh, brotherly kindness, and there, there you, have, uh, you have the seven locks, you have charity there, you have the seven locks, I miscount them anyway, you have the, the seven locks. Now, if we without these locks, the Bible says in the remainder of the verse there, nine, but he that lacketh these things is blind. Now, if we don't have these virtues here, we are, we are blind, spiritually speaking. We have been blinded by the devil. The Bible says that sinner is blinded by the God of this world system. But a Christian can be blinded to the certain things of God and the way of God for his life. And what God wants him to do. And he can wander around in confusion. If he doesn't have these seven things I mentioned here. From the epistle of Peter. Do you have them? Do you have uh, virtue? Knowledge? Temperance? Patience? Godliness? And brotherly kindness and charity? Do you have these? All of these seven must be added to your faith. Now if you have faith in God. Then these other things must be added to that faith. To help you to be a wide awake Christian and see the way you're going and not wander around not knowing the will of God for your life and not being used of God. We have a lot of blinded Christians today in that respect. Many of them don't know the will of God for their lives. Many of them don't know which way to turn to do their best for God. Many of them wandering around amounting to exactly nothing for God. They have been saved but they don't have these seven locks. Now, in order to be your best for God and have power with God and man, you need these seven locks that Peter mentioned here to be your best for God like Samson of old did, like he had. And so he got his hair cut in the devil's barbershop. And every Christian can do likewise. Every one of you that's saved today, you can get your hair cut in the devil's barbershop. You can lose these seven things I mentioned here in the epistle of Peter. But in order to be wide awake and strong, spiritually speaking, like Seth of old, you must have these seven locks. Then we move to thought number five, and that is, we find Samson, after he lost the seven locks of his hair, he ends up in the hands of the Philistines, the bitter enemies of God Almighty. In Judges chapter 16 and verse 21, But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Now, he had given them a hard time. He had killed many of them, defeated them many times in battle, and you can imagine how they hated this man, Samson. And the Bible said they took him then. The poor feller had his hair cut in the devil's barbershop, lost his power. Now he's standing there as weak as any man. Can't defend himself. And the Philistines, the enemies of God Almighty, took him over. Now we see here how sin is blinding. The Bible said they put out his eyes. Poor old Samson, they put his eyes out. The way they usually did in those days would take a hot iron and stick it into your eyes and burn your eyes out. And so they put his eyes out. He was blinded and now he's, he's binding. The Bible tells us they bound him with fetters. Here's a person not only blind, but he's bound. There's a lot of church members today that say they're saved, but they're bound by the affairs of this world. Some of you are bound by uh, bad habits, and some of you are bound by various other things. Bound by Satan, because Satan doesn't want you to be free and be used of God. And if there's anything binding you, you need to break that bind to the glory of God. Not only we find him blinding and binding, we find him grinding. The Bible said the way of the transgressor is hard. 
Now you go out here and let uh, old lady Lila cut you seven locks of your hair and you lose your power with God, you're going to find yourself blinded, binding, and grinding. Now Samson was carried down to the grist mill and there he was hooked to that grist mill and around and around he went grinding there at the grist mill. Beloved, here's God's man, God's servant that got his hair cut in the devil's barbershop and there he's grinding now and they're making sport of him, they're mocking him, they're laughing, they're saying our God Dagon is greater than Samson's God. See, we got him down there and they made sport of him. They would gather by the hundreds to watch him grind at that old grist mill. But you know, Samson's hair began to grow. The Bible says in Judges chapter 16, verse 22, his hair began to grow back out again. Now they hadn't thought about that. Those Philistines, blinded of course, uh, spiritually speaking, hadn't thought about his hair growing back. And they paid it no attention. His hair began to grow. It wasn't long. Uh, that hair was back out, no doubt, as beautiful and as long as ever. But he had no eyesight. He could never get that back. He received his hair back. And he received, began to receive his strength back. And the Philistines made sport of him. They laughed, they danced, they drank, they mocked. The Bible says in Judges chapter 16, verse 25, it came to pass when their hearts were merry that they said, Call for Samson, they may make sport. So when they got ready to make light of Jehovah God and to make light of um, the things of God and the men of God, they called him in to make sport of him. You know, that was hard on this great prophet of God at one time had such power could pick up the jawbone of a mule and kill a thousand of them. And now they're laughing at him and mocking and scoffing at him. And you know his hair began to grow and then they met in a certain place to worship Dagon their God and to make light of Samson. And there's a little lad standing nearby and Samson realized no doubt he had gained his strength. He said to this little boy in verse 26, he said, son, I want you to lead me underneath that house up on which those people are up there dancing and drinking and worshiping Dagon, their God, and making light of Jehovah God. Son, just take this old blind man by the hand and lead me underneath that house and lead me right to the strong pillars in that house. It's holding it up. And this little old boy led Samson to these strong pillars and he had received his power back. And he reached out with his hands and put his arms around each one and began to press forward. He said, God... Help me get revenge on these Philistines for putting out my eyes and for the way they're making light of me in the light of Jehovah. God, give me, give me victory one more time. Lord, let me glorify you one more time. And so he began to pull and he pulled those pillars down and down came that house and killed thousands of these Philistines. In verse 30, so the dead he slew in his death were more than they which he slew in his lifetime. And so Samson got his hair back. He never got his sight back. Got his hair back. Got his strength back. But it cost him his life. Samson here committed suicide in order to get revenge upon the enemies of God. Now Samson is a man that committed suicide and went to paradise. In Judges chapter 16 verse 30. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead, which he slew in his death, and more than they, which he slew in his lifetime. But if you go to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 32, the Bible said, What shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David also, and Samuel, and other prophets. Uh, this man, Samson, got his name on God's honor roll. He died, he pulled the house in on himself. He slew thousands of the enemies of God and he went on to paradise that day and his name is now on God's honor roll. So Samson is a man that received a haircut in the devil's barbershop and lost his power. Now you need to stay out of the devil's barbershop. He'll trip off your, the, uh, the rolls of your hair and there you lose your power whenever you get to your, your locks of your hair cut off spiritually speaking as you sojourn for God. Now I hope you take the message then and apply it to your hearts and think about it as you sojourn. Thank you. You've listened well. Let's stand to our feet. Dear Father, I pray today you'll take the message and use it and help us realize we can mighty easily have the seven locks of our hair cut off by visiting the devil's barbershop. 
Help us, our Father, to have these things that Simon Peter mentioned in our daily walk. That we might have power, we might be a blessing, we might win others to thee, and enjoy the great things of God. Be happy as we sojourn for the Lord. Speak to hearts yet today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Debbie's going to play for us, and she plays if you're in this building unsaved. I want you to walk down the side and get saved. If you're backslidden on God, you felt like you've lost the seven locks of your hair, why don't you come down and get them back? If you want to join the church, you may come and we receive members. Would you come while she plays for us while we wait? Just walk right down the aisle and let us help you. We'll be glad to.